critical care unit and critical care. Outline Introduction ICU management The pre-critically ill patient Evaluation of a critically ill patient Important note Introduction Patients admitted to ICU should generally have a potentially reversible problem, an acute insult, infection or trauma or blood or fluid loss or rupture of viscous etc. would have caused organ dysfunction and ICUs are areas where artificial support and specific therapy can be given to hasten recovery. ICU management Ensure adequate tissue oxygenation Maintain chemical environment Maintain temperature Organ protection Nutritional support Infection control Physiotherapy and rehabilitation Family visiting hours The pre-critically ill patient it is now well established that early recognition and aggressive intervention for a patient who is pre-critical improves the final outcome. The management is based on early intervention for the airway, breathing or oxygenation, circulation, drug, administration and adverse reactions, electrolyte or fluid imbalance and specific therapy. Example of any infection. Evaluation of a critically patient. The evaluation of a critically ill patient is necessary in two situations. 1. Initial evaluation of a person who has become critically ill. 2. Regular evaluation of the critically ill patient in the ICU, who may be on one or more of the following therapies oxygen therapy, mechanical ventilation, enotropes or dialysis, to monitor progress and to focus on any new problems. Initial evaluation. The purpose of early evaluation is early recognition of cardiorespiratory and neurological dysfunction and effective intervention. Regular revaluation. This should be done systematically in order to collect appropriate data for therapy. It includes correlation of clinical, electronically monitored and laboratory data. Respiratory, airway. In an unintubated patient, the following should be noted. Noisy breathing, neurological, tube position and security, cuff pressure. Breathing. In an unventilated patient, the following should be noted. Pattern of breathing with specific reference to equality of movement of both sides of the chest and in drawing of intercostal spaces. Abnormal movement of chest and abdomen. Paradoxical respiration. Respiratory alternance, both indicating diaphragmatic fatigue. Mediastinal position with specific reference to the tracheal position and position of the apex beat. Percussion note to recognize a change in note to diagnose pleural, pneumothorax, effusion, parenchymal, consolidation, collapse, abnormalities and also the extent of cardiac and hepatic dullness. Auscultation for breath sounds on both sides of the chest, both anteriorly and posteriorly, to note intensity as well as alteration in the quality of breath sounds, bronchial, crepitations, crackles in dependent areas may indicate early hypostatic pneumonia and bronchi indicate airway narrowing. Cardiovascular and Tissue Oxygenation 
clinical evaluation of this involves pulse rate and volume, blood pressure and venous pressure, capillary refill time, skin temperature, urine output. Investigations include the ECG and the oxygenation or the acid base indicators. Neurological status. The sensorium in a critically ill patient can be either depressed or delirious or restless. A depressed sensorium could be due to a reduction in oxygen or glucose to the brain or due to brain injury. A GCS score is detailed but an AV PUP score is a rapid way to assess the trend in the neurological status. A. A. Alert. Response to. V. Voice. P. Pain only. U. Unresponsive. P. Pupillary size and reflexes. Restlessness in a critically ill patient should be assumed to be due to cerebral hypoxia unless proven otherwise. A useful mnemonic to remember the common causes of altered sensorium is pain comes, P poisoning, A alcohol, I infection, meningitis, encephalitis, sepsis, N neurological, trauma, space occupying lesions, CVA, seizures, C, carbon dioxide retention, O, oxygen low, hypoxia, M, metabolic, hepatic coma, uremia, myxedema coma, hypoadrenalism, E, electrolyte abnormalities, S, sugar, Metabolic status. The following should be actively checked every day. Fluid balance and renal function. Intake or output. Creatinine or urea. Electrolytes. The most important is serum potassium. Blood glucose. Nutritional therapy. Details are given in the section Nutrition. Infection. Temperature record. An elevation as well as a drop in temperature are important signs. White cell count. A rise or fall or change in differential count could all be a marker of the SIRS syndrome. Chest X-ray. Careful study of the chest X-ray to look for new infiltration as well as the silhouette sign is essential. Change in the P or F ratio with an acceptable carbon dioxide value can be an early clue of a pneumonia. Local inspection of sites of vascular and urinary catheters is also essential. Miscellaneous Oral hygiene is a very important component of the nursing care of critically ill patients as infected secretions can be aspirated and cause nosocomial pneumonia. The oral cavity should be inspected daily. Upper GI bleed is checked for by inspecting the aspirate from the nasogastric tube. Skin infection for bed sores should include all pressure points, especially the occipital region in patients with tetanus who have opisthotonus where the hair makes it easy to miss early lesions. Eyes. Corneal ulcers and eye infections should be detected early. Lower limbs should be inspected and palpated daily for evidence of deep venous thrombosis. Prophylactic heparin should be used in those with immobile lower limbs. A daily systematic approach is essential to obtain accurate data as well as to evaluate the information to decide on ventilatory settings, fluid, electrolyte and nutritional supplementation, enotrope or diuretic doses, appropriate antibiotics, chest physiotherapy and nursing care as necessary. Important note, 
protracted organ support without a definitive diagnosis and therapy merely delays death. Early intervention is a therapeutic trial. If there is lack of improvement, consider alternative diagnosis, additional underlying conditions,